I'm a daughter of Appalachia, the first in my family to attend college. That college degree opened doors for me that my parents could never imagine. My work, my calling is to open those doors for all Appalachian students. This is radical work. I do this radical work at Berea College, a place, a community that was founded on radical ideals, like educating blacks and whites, men and women, together under one roof. And that was 1855, 10 years before the Civil War. The work I do, creating a pathway through college to success for all students, it is the radical work of today. Now all Appalachian students succeed. I understand why that may be radical for those folks that are not from here. They don't understand and they haven't met the wonderful people from our place. What they've been raised on are stereotypes of Appalachia, the people, the place. Raised on these stereotypes and poverty porn, they do not see our young people as leaders, as dreamers. They see them as followers without vision. But what really upsets me is that this idea is radical right here in this place. People here do not believe that all Appalachian students deserve a pathway through college to career to success. So that's why I'm here with you today. Just as in 1855, the idea of gender equity and racial equity, those were radical ideas. Today's radical idea is, that, is an educational equity that all Appalachian students can succeed. So what's success? So when I think of success, I think of my mom and my dad, my grandparents, and what they wanted for me. They wanted me to be happy, healthy, and self-sufficient. They wanted me to worry less about paying bills and have more time to enjoy life, family, and place. And that's what I want for my two sons. That's what I want for Malcolm, for Christopher. That's what I want for all Appalachian students. And what is the surest pathway to success? It is a college degree. Data tells us that those who have attended college live longer. Their health outcomes are greater. They make 56% more than those with a high school degree alone. So that sounds a lot like what my parents wanted for me. Happy, healthy, self-sufficient, less worry about paying bills, more time to enjoy life, community, and place. So that's what I want for Malcolm, for Christopher, for all Appalachian students. So I'm here today to ask you to join me in this journey to ensure that all our students have these opportunities. When I think about this work, before I can talk about the pushback and the barriers to success, I have to start by dispelling a stereotype. A stereotype that our parents do not want their children to be successful. That parents in Eastern Kentucky don't want their kids to go to college, whether it's for fear of losing them or for this idea they'll get above their raisins. There may have been some truth, a kernel of truth to that 50 years ago, but today our parents want our young people to succeed. Last year, Partners for Education surveyed over 8,000 parents in Eastern Kentucky, and these were parents of sixth graders and seventh graders. 92% of those parents had already talked to their kid about going to college. 70% believed their kids would attain a college degree. So this is a stereotype that's damaging our place and our region. When I talk with parents across this region, they, like me, want their kids to be successful. And they, like me, think that college is the surest pathway to success in today's world. So why the pushback? Why the pushback here in the region? I've thought a lot about this, and I think it's fear, and I think it's also we're valuing our place and our community more than we value other people's children. 
Sometimes it takes a story from another place to illustrate something that should be clear. And that happened to me with this. I have a colleague who does work similar to the work I do, but she does it in an African-American community in an urban area. So she had this cool project. She partnered with a local hospital, and they gave every newborn child a onesie. And that onesie said, college graduate, class of 2040, or whenever that child would graduate. The idea is that the family would see the child in the onesie and realize my child can break that cycle of generational poverty and undereducation. My child can be a college graduate. What she was unprepared for with this project was that the leaders in the community who had been supporting her work, they pushed back on this project. One person said to her, do we really want all those babies to grow up to be college graduates? If they do, who will be our cooks? our janitors, who will do those jobs. So I think here, I see that same thing playing out, a fear. If these children, if these young people are college graduates, who will be here to take care of our place and to take care of me? Honestly, I think it comes down to we have different dreams for the children of others. I've heard leaders in this community talk about a college degree is not necessary for success. Yet when I talk to these folks one-on-one -on -one and get to know them, and they talk about their families and their kids and their grandkids, without fail, their children were on a path through college to success, if not an advanced degree. We as a people have to start having the same goals, aspirations for all children that we have for hours. And when I say all, I mean all. This image is a piece of art created here in Knox County by a young person. It says, home is where the hurt is. Home is where the hurt is. It's a tough time to be a child in Appalachia today. Too many of our young people are in foster care. We have record numbers of young people in foster care record numbers of young people being raised by non-parents. I've had principals tell me that over half their students are being raised by somebody other than their parent. Data tells us that only 20% of foster students will actually attend college. It's hard to be a young person here. It's even harder if you're African American. Homelessness is a reality for too many of our young people 10% of our young people are, gonna, are experiencing homelessness or will experience homelessness. But 30% of African American students will experience homelessness. And we know that the college going rate of those experiencing homelessness is chronically low. So we as a community, we have to build supports and opportunities for all kids. It's only when those young people that are most vulnerable, when they, serve, they thrive, that Appalachia will rise. So it's a radical result that all Appalachian students can succeed. And I often get asked, will it happen? Could it happen? And yes, it can. Our young people are amazing. They have dreams. They can succeed. Today, you'll have a chance to listen to a few of these young people leading right here in Appalachia. Listen to their wisdom they can be the architects of their own success. Now, I'm not naive. I know that while parents want their kids to succeed, we have too many parents that do not have the capability to support their young people through success. And while young people want to succeed, too many are being raised in trauma. The opioid epidemic is shattering this region. It's critical that we provide supports for all young people. They're amazing, they're resilient, they're talented, but they cannot thrive on their own. But then again, how many of us got where we are today by ourselves? I know I didn't. I had Mrs. Walker, she was that fourth grade teacher who told me I could be a teacher. 
I had Mrs. Hurt, the guidance counselor, who convinced me to turn in that application for the Governor's Scholars Program, even though nobody from my part of the county had ever been accepted. I had Virgil Burnside, who actually convinced my mom to visit Berea College. I had Mary McLaughlin, who taught me that you can have more than a job. You can actually have a career that means something. So I've had people that have helped me from the beginning that are still helping me. And I bet if you all thought about it, your list is just as long. So it's critical that we support all young people in our community. My friend Celeste put it best. She said, we need to do for all kids what her mama wanted to do for her. Her mama wanted to give her roots and wings memories and dreams. And Celeste said her mama knew if she did that, that she'd know where she came from, that the world was bigger, and that the world was hers. So in 1855, it was radical to believe that blacks and whites, men and women, could be educated under one roof. And today, that is the expectation. I ask you all in building an Appal work with me to build an Appalachia where all Appalachian students succeed, where a college degree is the expectation for all. Take action today. Mentor a young person. Volunteer in a school. Advocate to support policies and funding for our public schools. Work in your community to ensure that those most vulnerable have supports. Together, we can provide all our young people with roots and wings, memories and dreams. We can ensure, as Celeste's mama says, that they know where they come from, that the world is bigger, and that the world is theirs. And that is success. Thank you.